All right, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Shona Virtue and I am gonna take you through a bit of a mixed bag vinyasa session today. But before I do that, let's go to the intro. So before we were pleasantly interrupted by that wonderful intro, I was telling you that we are about to do a very mixed style vinyasa practice. And when I say mixed, it's sort of like the sequencing is quite mixed and it's inspired by the three-dimensional nature of the body and the fact that we really need to make sure that we're moving in different planes of motion. So rather than just kind of going back and forward or flexing and extending forward, I want to explore, you know, twisting and more rotational movements, which are really beneficial in strengthening your spine because we're going to do this under load. They're also really good for developing core strength as well. We are very lucky to have this practice accompanied by the beautiful, and talented Alexis French and his incredible classical piano music, which to be honest, I just listen to outside and off the yoga mat as well, but it does accompany yoga really, really well. And we have permission to do that for this video, which is great. Without further ado, let's get on with the practice. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was make sure that you have, if, if you're new to yoga and not even if you're new, like sometimes it's really handy to just have blocks nearby, regardless of how long you've been practicing just because of how helpful they are. In fact, I'm gonna sit on these two blocks right now um, to raise my hips a little bit for this first exercise. If you don't have blocks, it's totally fine, but if you are new to yoga and you are wanting to um, improve your practice, I highly, highly encourage getting a pair, which will help you um, on your yoga journey. So starting either on your blocks or just sitting on your heels, we're actually gonna start with some neck cars, some neck controlled articular rotations. So what you're gonna do is close your eyes, make two fists with your hands and pull your arms down by your side. I want you to firm up your arms arms here and pull them away from you. We want to keep them firm so that we can start to what's called irradiate through the body, keeping everything nice and still so that we're just articulating through this one joint. What we want to minimize is the rest of the body moving around. So by firming up and irradiating, we help to stabilize all the other joints so that one joint only can move, okay? So closing your eyes, you're gonna drop your chin to your chest, keep your arms firmed up, keep your core braced, and you can also firm up your legs too. And then from there, we're gonna take our chin over to the side, to that left collarbone or well, the right collarbone, doesn't matter which one. And then drop the ear to the, to the shoulder as your chin drops forward. Then we're gonna, almost like we're drawing a circle with our chin, you're gonna drop your head back and come around, over to the side, we'll move to the other side. Chin comes down and the ear comes towards the shoulder. From there, I want you to tip your chin down to the collarbone and then bring it back to center. And we'll go the other way. So we go around. And then over to the other side. Now, if you feel any pain, that's when you drop your head back, if you feel pain at the back of the neck, or perhaps when you turn to the side and you feel it on the side, then I want you to, um, I want you to back out of this a little bit. So rather than pushing through the pain, the impingement kind of pain, the closing angle joint pain, I want you to just not take such a big uh, circular rotation. Keep going. It's okay if you have a stretch sensation, but we wanna, if we have any sort of closing angle joint pain, we need to stop. One more time. Okay, coming back to center. Alrighty, I love cars. Okay, you're gonna cross your arms like so. Okay, and we're gonna bring the elbows in close like you're doing the Macarena. Okay, and then drop your body down. I don't know if it's like an old thing. I feel like it's, it's a very old thing. <laughs> no one else knows what the Macarena is. All right, give this video a thumbs up if you know what the Macarena is. Okay, so drop in. Drop the chin into the chest. And from here, we're gonna to start to just twist side to side. Now, what I want you to try and do is keep your pelvis still, so don't let your body drop, uh, move at all. We're just trying to get some rotational ability here in the thoracic spine. So we're locking everything in. And just notice 
where your restrictions are. If you have to keep your hips still, like do you actually have that much rotation? Come back to center. Okay, we'll lift. We're gonna go into extension and then flexion. So extension and then flexion. Extension and then flexion. Extension and then flexion. Okay, come back to extension and we'll take it into a lateral flexion or lateral flexion and extension. So over to the side, and over to the other side. Same, when you go over to one side, the side that's closing, try not to lift and hike up that hip. Feel as though you're dropping down and there's tension on this side as it stretches. So it's holding you, stabilizing you. And then again, repeat on the other side. We wanna try and keep everything still. Come back to center and we'll kind of join all of those moment, movements up together, okay? So you're gonna drop in, twist, move to the side, go into extension, take it to the other side, twist and then come back to center. So it's a twist, side, extend, side, twist, back to center and flex. Yeah, again, other side, twist and extend. And what we want to try to do, and I'm not doing a very good job over here because I'm trying to also talk to you and not crush my head into my mic, but you want your chin locked into your chest and you just want to feel as though you're just moving the thoracic. And it's hard with a mic on. And just pay attention to where you feel that tension. I mean, these joints should all have this sort of 3D rotational capability here. And when they don't, that's when the joint becomes compromised. Alrighty, release it down. Let's lift the hips, move the blocks out from underneath you. We're gonna move into child's pose. So bring the feet together, let the knees come out nice and wide, push the hips back to the heels, and then go ahead and extend your arms forward and drop your head down. Take a deep breath in. Release a full breath out and allow yourself to really soften here. Feel the back of the neck relax. Pay attention to where you're feeling tension. Inhale. Really try to breathe into the back body here. Exhale, melt down. Move your hips from side to side to start to lubricate the hips a little bit, opening into the groin. See if you've got a little bit extra space to extend those arms a tiny bit further forward. One more time, inhale, take the breath all the way in. Stretching the back of the ribs, exhale, melting down. Relax the back of the neck, relax the face, the jaw. Well, inhale, pull forward into an all fours position onto the hands and knees and just adjust the knees so they're hip distance. Hands are shoulder distance, spread the fingers nice and wide. I'm gonna get you to relax your chest down. So it feels like your shoulder blades are kind of like slipping off your back. And then you're gonna push away as though you're trying to push the spine back through and past the shoulder blades, okay? So this is called protraction. And then I want you to relax back, yeah? So protract the shoulders away off the back, yeah? And then allow yourself to relax again. Okay, so chest relaxes through and then protract, spreading the shoulder blades. We don't wanna crunch up into the neck. I want you to keep the shoulders away from the ears, but then relax back down, push away. Good, now hold that protracted position here. And then from there, I want you to arch your back, starting at the lumbar, imagine you had a tail. Yeah, so you wanna wag your tail. Well, I don't know how to wag a tail, but I want you to feel as though you're beginning from the pelvis and we're coming into extension and then from there we're gonna to start to lift the head, extending through the cervical spine or cervical spine. And then chin to chest, push the floor away, begin to push the thoracic in. So we wanna draw it in, flex, 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 and then we go into lumbar. And then start to move anterior pelvic tilt, extending the lumbar spine, extending thoracic, extending cervical, flexing cervical, flexing thoracic, flexing lumbar, posterior pelvic tilt. So I really want this isolated. Inhale, exhale. So easy to rush through this movement. I know it feels like I'm paying a lot of attention to a fairly simple move, but this is technically our warm up. And if you're not becoming very sensitive in the warm up, then the rest of the practice becomes not redundant, but isn't as effective. Come back to center, okay. So from here, tuck the toes, push 
the knees off the floor. And I just want you to make sure that you're gripping into all 10 fingers when you come into downward facing dog here. Now adjust your arms accordingly. If you go too close with the arms, you might find that your shoulder mobility doesn't allow this. So make sure your hands are wide enough here. Push the floor away and activate your trapezius, your upper traps. So we're loaded, right? This is an overhead press. So I want you to not draw the shoulders away from the ears, but the opposite. So draw them up to the ears. And then we're just gonna go ahead and walk out through the heels, opening up through the back of the legs. I'd like you to keep your core active here. So really still trying to pull the ribs down as much as possible. We're gonna inhale, come forward to a high push-up position. Hold your high push up here, again, protracting through the shoulders. Belly draws in, and we draw in from the base. Yeah, we're not just sucking our stomach to our spine, we're drawing in. Tailbone tucks, glute squeeze from here, drop the knees, drop the chest, elbow shape the sides of the body as we come down, and then inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift up into cobra, activating those back muscles and activating that ability to extend. So lifting everything off, hands come back down, push back, child's pose. Inhale, come into all fours, tuck the toes, exhale, back to down dog. Okay, inhale, high push up. Exhale, if you wanna go ahead and take full chaturanga, keep the knees lifted as you lower down. Open it up, cobra or up dog, knees, hips and thighs come off the floor. Exhale, press back into child's pose. And if your t-shirt's really annoying you while you try and teach a yoga session, go ahead and take it off, <laughs> which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, so inhale, come forward. Tuck the toes, exhale, down dog. Inhale, high push up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, back to down dog this time. Okay, walk out through the heels, open up through the back of the legs and shake out your head yes and no, but still keep pushing the shoulders up towards the ears so we're active through the traps here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lift that right leg up high. Now, as you lift it, I'd like you to not open the hip yet. I'd actually like you to keep your hips square. Belly pulls in and squeeze your glute. From here, exhale, come forward, knee to elbow, try to make it touch, really flexing through the hip, active through the core, strong shoulders, inhale, take it back up, exhale, take it across. So now we get a little bit more rotational here, take it back up, inhale, exhale, swing the foot forward. Now, we wanna step it in between the hands. If it didn't make it, grab your ankle, pull it further forward, drop the back knee down to the floor. Belly pulls in, I want you to squeeze your left glute, so tuck your tailbone, Anjayanasana, so we're in a low lunge here. Now, sink your hips forward, we're going to take the arms out to the side, inhale, reach them up. Now notice I've pushed my hip back, I'm going to cross my arms behind me, so left hand comes behind the right, I'm going to squeeze my arms into my ears. I'm lifting up and decompressing the spine, but at the same time, I'm gonna squeeze my glute. Now push the hip forward, pushing into the back foot. We're gonna reach up and over to the side. So we're extending, we're lengthening over, and then I'm gonna to continue to twist down, hands come to the floor. Step back into downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, inhale. Keep the hips square, squeeze the glute. Exhale, bring the knee forward. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, step that foot forward in between the hands. Remember, if it didn't make it, you need to grab it, pull it forward, drop the back knee down to the floor. So from here, what I want you to pay attention to is that that knee sits directly above the ankle here. Okay, now from here, Anjayanasana. So what we wanna do is take the arms out to the side, pushing back, right palm behind left, arms hug into the ears, decompress the spine by lengthening up, squeeze the right glute, tuck your tailbone, sink forward. Push into the back toes, lengthen up and over to the side, hold here. Lengthening, twist, lean forward, Hands come down, step back, downward facing dog. Shake out your head yes and no. We'll take the vinyasa, reset the breath. Inhale, high push up. 
Exhale, lower down your choice. Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, active through the back. Still active through the back if you're taking up dog. Exhale, press back, downward facing. Right leg lifts. This time, open the hip, bend the knee. So we now get a little bit more of a stretch for the obliques, hip flexor. From there, step the foot forward in between the hands. Good, if it didn't make it, move it there. Okay, holding it here, press into the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot, okay? Lifting your arches, so we're in a crescent lunge position. Again, arms out to the side, inhale. Left hand behind right, squeeze the arms up. Squeeze your back left glute, don't let that relax. Keep it squeezed, it's supporting your lumbar spine here. Lift and lengthen. Look up to the ceiling, gentle back bend. Back foot flattens to the floor. Extend your arms, warrior two. Now, for warrior two, bend into that front knee, belly pulls in. I want you to feel like you're zipping up here. So you have a zip that's kind of pulling all of this fascia in and up, and it zips up towards your sternum, okay? The ribs pull down too. Press into both feet and try to draw the feet together but keep the arms relaxed and extended. So they're firm, but the shoulders are relaxed, the neck is relaxed, your face is soft. Gazing forward, your drishti point over through the middle finger. Keeping your eyes focused, breathing here. Okay, this part's the tricky part. So this is our transition. Now what you're gonna do, have a watch of what I do first. So I'm gonna pivot from my back foot we want to feel everything move in conjunction. As I pivot this back foot, my right arm moves up, my left arm moves forward, right hand comes back, finds the outside of my left thigh, and this left arm reaches up and back. You can see my ankle wobbling down here. I'm trying to really stabilize through the foot, developing stability in these awkward angles. We're gonna come forward. We're gonna hook the left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. Back glute is squeezed. Palms come together, push and twist. Come back to center, hands to the floor. Step back, keep the right leg lifted, lower down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right. Other side, left leg lifts up, inhale. Open the hip and bend the knee. Step the foot forward in between the hands. Good, from here, firm up your legs, press into the tripod of the foot. So ball of the foot and the heel. Belly pulls in, arms out to the side. This time, right hand behind left. Squeeze the arms up, squeeze the right glute. Push into the back foot. Lift and lengthen. Inhale, crescent lunge. And then exhale, warrior two. Open the hips, turn out the back toes, bend to the, to the knee, and extend your arms. Remember that zipper. So zipping up through the front, ribs pull down, bend in, draw the legs in together. So we feel like we have all of this energy pulling in and up into the center line. But everything else remains relaxed. Drishti point, middle finger. <laughs> Good. And from here, take a deep breath in. Exhale. Who ready for this crazy transition? Back foot, pivots. We do this kind of windmill backstroke with the arms. Left hand finds the outside of the right. Right arm reaches up and back. Lengthen, hook, twist. Palms together, hold. Look to the floor, hands come down, step back, keep that leg lifted, lower down. Inhale, cobra, or up dog, exhale, child's pose for me. Press the hips back to the heels and just melt here. Find length in your spine, take a deep breath in, full breath out. Relax the back of the neck. Exhale. All right, pull forward, all fours. Tuck the toes, press back down, the facing dog. Spread the fingers nice and wide here, bending at the knees. We're gonna move into a bunny hop position. This is one of the best ways to get a stable freestanding handstand. Now, if you're like, what, sorry, um, no, I didn't do handstand. 
just chill for a second because what I want you to do is just literally look forward and take the tiniest bunny hop, okay? The tiniest, because technically, hey, as soon as your feet come off the floor, you're in a handstand. So every single one of us are gonna be able to do this. Unless, of course, you have a shoulder issue or a wrist issue, so you're not doing it. In which case, I would just drop down into child's pose, take your breaths until we're ready to come back in, okay? For those of you coming with me with handstand, key thing here, press into all 10 fingers. The fingers are like your feet, right? They are gonna help you balance. And we don't notice what goes on in the feet because we've been doing it all our lives. But when you're doing handstand, suddenly you, you have to use more conscious mind to try and make it work. So consciously think about your fingers providing balance for you. Your eyes look forward and they always look forward. If you drop your head down, that is one variation, but I guarantee you will fall out of it unless you're specifically practicing that variation. Bend your knees, gaze forward, take a breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna hop and we're going to aim to get our hips above our wrists. Each time we hop, we're gonna try and get a little bit higher and we're taking five hops, so let's go. For those of you that wanna do handstand, go ahead straight into it and extend your legs up. Three, try not to let your bend, elbows bend out to the side. Really firm up your arms and again, traps on. Pull the shoulders up towards the ears. Four, last one. But, and we might find that we can balance the and if we do feel like we can balance there, maybe we can start to extend the legs up. Okay, good, bring it down. Everyone meet in child's pose, hips to heels, relax here. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Inhale and exhale. Send your arms forward, pull forward into an all fours position, tuck the toes, exhale, press back. Downward dog, shake out your head. Bend your knees, look forward, hop to a cross seated position at the top of the mat. All right, so grab your blocks if you have them. You may not need them for this variation, but we're going to move into a, a bridge position or a tabletop position. So lifting the hips up, so if you find you have tight shoulders, by raising your hands, it makes it a lot easier on the shoulders, okay? Um, by turning your hands out, going wider, there's various different things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna take the hardest variation, fingers pointing forward, chest lifting, and take a deep breath in, and then I'm gonna exhale, lift off. And as I lift off, I'm not collapsing and rounding through the shoulders. I wanna push the shoulders away and lift the hips as high as possible here, squeezing through the glutes. Inhale, coming down. Exhale, lifting up. Inhale, coming down. Exhale, lifting up. Really trying to push my ribs away from my shoulders. Coming down, soles of the feet together. Knees come out wide. I'm gonna come onto my back. Lift the hips, tuck the tailbone. And from here, take hold of either, either wrist, right? Or forearm, or all the way up onto the shoulders. Opening up the shoulders here. Take a deep breath in. Full breath out. Exhale. Take the hands down to the thighs, carry the knees in together, squeeze the knees all the way in. Gently rock from side to side. Alrighty, let yourself roll onto your left side. Use your hands to push yourself up to a seated position. You can sit on a block. Raising the hips, which makes it much more comfortable to sit in this cross-legged position. Closing your eyes, relaxing your shoulders. We'll finish with our neck cars again, but just some sort of gentle ones. Do three in one direction. Try not to move your rib cage. You can place your hands there to stop yourself. 
We'll go the other direction. Three, two, and that's one. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.